Engaging retro thrusters now. Lunar transfer station Tacoma. Commercial cargo transit facility. Crew evacuated. Station AI offline. Air supply? Breathable air on Tacoma for a crew of one should be more than sufficient. Docking now. Okay. Before we start, let's get the is it a game question out of the way. At the risk of being beaten into submission by scholars of semantics, my simple answer is yes. If Tacoma and other walking simulators make you angry when they receive good scores despite what you might perceive as limited interaction, that's fine. The solution I'd propose would be to ignore walking simulators as games themselves. When you see them high on lists of critically well received games, just pretend they aren't there. If that game you really like got a 7 out of 10 and Virginia got an 8, just remind yourself that Virginia isn't a game, it's an interactive story, you'll feel way better, I promise. I went into this a little bit in my Under the Radar Virginia feature, check that out if you want a slightly less flippant view on our walking simulators games, there's a link in the description. With that aside, let's get into Tacoma. In Tacoma, you assume the role of Amy Ferrier, a sort of corporate detective, investigating events on the titular space station on behalf of your employer's Venturis Corporation. The station itself has been evacuated, but thankfully, augmented reality projections of the crew, a result of 24-hour surveillance, allow you to uncover the story surrounding their evacuation. The gameplay revolves around exploring the station and watching the interactions of the quasi-spectral AR figures. As with Fulbright's previous title, Gone Home, you are unobtrusively guided to explore every corner of the station, the Tacoma is excellently executed, feeling futuristic but lived in, with human touches marking much of the sleek, stainless steel science fiction aesthetic. The world building throughout Tacoma is exemplary, with a sharp focus on corporate hegemony, workers' rights, and unchecked globalization. Tacoma paints a picture of a future society where individuals' lives are pledged to big companies, with even your currency tied to your employment. The simple act of moving from one corporation to another brings with it financial and prospective employment penalties. I saw the way that this was represented as the next logical step forward regarding the very real situation today of migrant construction workers having their passports confiscated, essentially enslaved to their bosses. Tacoma's version of this is insidiously linked to a kind of American dream utopianism, including timeshares in orbital condos. This idea naturally intersects with surveillance. Here is a future where the nothing to hide ideology has been fully embraced and privacy now appears non-existent. There is a deliberate, playful irony in this as you search through someone's things while their AR ghost enjoys a moment of solitude a couple of feet from you. Tacoma's six crew members are realised as simple wireframe humanoids distinguished by primary colours and various different body types. Despite the inability to discern facial expressions from the crew, excellent voice work brings them to life and each is memorable and well developed. Often more interesting than what they say to each other are their private message correspondences and moments away from each other. Panic attacks, unseen by the rest of the crew, and lovelorn confessions colour and recontextualise previous conversations and inform future ones. Four of the six crew are in relationships with each other, and while these are well written and mostly compelling, the two other characters are considerably more interesting by not having their limited screen time defined by another person. Sara Hasmadi, the ship's medical officer, is undoubtedly the best character here, frequently interacting in intriguing ways with the crew and the ship's onboard AI. What makes Hasmadi such a compelling character is that on the surface she's the most closed off. As a result, the gameplay of rooting through her life and learning about her past feels the most focused and pertinent throughout the four hour story. In addition to the main crew, we have Odin, the station's onboard artificial intelligence represented as an Illuminati-esque one-eyed pyramid. Initially operating as an exposition machine, Odin's role develops over the course of the story in ways that I won't spoil here. 
Whether you like Tacoma will largely depend on your tolerance for reading and listening to other people talk. There are definitely moments where progress mechanics, which is rewinding conversations and finding enough things to be allowed to move forward, hold back the pacing of the narrative, something other walking simulators like Virginia manage to avoid with editing. Of course, the success of Tacoma will always be linked to its ability to storytell. This burden will always be made heavier without gameplay mechanics beyond simple examination. With that in mind, it's slightly disappointing that Tacoma's story falls just short of landing. There is a lot to admire in the storytelling here. However, without the surprise that the genre and narrative subversion of Gone Home gave us, Tacoma is unable to muster enough impactful moments. It's a surprisingly small and quiet story that hints at something bigger, but it can't quite find the emotional impact of the quiet story or the compelling revelation of the larger one within. For fans of the genre, Tacoma is definitely worth the fairly small time investment. However, this won't be the walking simulator to convert those in opposition. If you like this video, give me a like and subscribe to our page for more video game related content. I've been Jamie for Hate Poor Player, I'll see you next time.